Hello, everyone. This is Charles Rayburn from ServiceNow. I'm a senior manager of customer success advocacy at ServiceNow. Uh, this is our 44th office hour. It's uh, ITBM integration with ADO, so a little bit of agile, a little ADO. Um, our goal here is the first 30 minutes, we've invited a really great subject matter expert um, to speak, Rob Erickson, um, to talk about uh, the particular topic, as well as to demonstrate um, what's going on with the topic. And the remaining 30 minutes is all for customers such as yourself to ask, ask any questions that you may have that come out of this. Um, for those who are watching the video, feel free to let us know if there's any questions, just post it on the community site that you see it, and it will try to respond to those accordingly. So without further ado, uh, Rob, take it away. All right. Thanks very much, Charles. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Rob Erickson. I'm a senior product manager in our ITBM team uh, at ServiceNow. I've been with ServiceNow for a little over seven years. Uh, so uh, what we're going to be talking about today is our integration between our Scrum Agile product and Azure DevOps. Uh, so the reason for this integration primarily is that we have a lot of customers a lot of organizations out there that are using Azure DevOps as their tool of execution for doing agile work, uh, where their developers often or just other team members feel very comfortable uh, doing their work in Azure DevOps, but they still would like to use ServiceNow for a lot of the planning activities. Now, this is our typical use case. That's not necessarily true. You could do, still do the planning in Azure DevOps and the execution in ServiceNow, uh, but our typical use case is, is the, the other way around. So let me go ahead and share my screen. I don't have any slides today, just going to go straight into the demo. So hopefully that's going to be okay for everyone. So what we're looking right now at right now is our Azure is the an Azure DevOps instance. Um, we're going to drill into a specific product we have called our ADO integration product. And that has multiple teams associated to it. Uh, so we can get to get those team views via this boards view. And we can see different work items that are out there. If we go to our sprints, we can make sure we have a specific team uh, chosen. We've got stories out there, we've got epics. And so this is this is what we're seeing right now with Azure DevOps. So what we wanted to be able to do is have this work in Azure DevOps also show up in ServiceNow Scrum Agile. So uh, the things that we're using, the, the technology we're using behind the scenes is the uh, integration hub spoke for Azure DevOps within ServiceNow. And then, what, what our uh, development team did is they created a lot of, they, they leveraged that spoke and then created a lot of uh, flow designer flows to basically automate the integration. And it's a, a bi-directional integration between uh, ServiceNow and Azure DevOps, where any updates made in ServiceNow will reflect in Azure DevOps and vice versa. So as you can see, we've got some items in here. We're looking at our cur current sprint, which is our um, uh, looking at, this HR Dev Sprint 18 for Azure DevOps. So I just want you to, to keep a note of that. So as we go through the demo, you'll see that as we make the updates on one side, they're going to be reflected in the other. So right now we're looking at, this is our current sprint and we've got four stories associated with that. So what I'm gonna do is go back over into ServiceNow and show our Scrum program board for ServiceNow. Uh, so this, program board allows us to see the work being done, the agile work being done by multiple teams. Those are these horizontal swim lanes, as well as all the sprints that are associated to those teams. So we can see this career app development team has several sprints, this HR delivery team has several sprints. Within each sprint, you can see the stories that they've been that have been assigned to that team within that sprint. Uh, so those are the different cards. Each of these cards is one story. Uh, and within that card, there's actually uh, several pieces of information that's available. You can see in the, the little circle here is the number of points that have been assigned to that story. Uh, we can see you know, this blue dot. If you hover over it, it will show you the epic that that story is associated to. Um, you can see before the story, we could see a check mark for any stories that are actually complete. They'll have a check mark next to them. Or if a story is blocked, it has this red X. In, in front of the story. And there's also a little icon next to the story that you'll notice, and that's really the origin of that story. Uh, where did it come from? So most of these, as you see here, were all stories that were created directly within the Agile product. Later on in this demo, you'll see actually a different type of story we're gonna create um, from an incident that will look slightly different. All right, a few other things uh, that we can see with this particular view. Um, so if we go to our, um, uh, backlog view, we can show our team backlog. So we can see if there's anything that has not currently been assigned to a sprint that, that a team has associated to it. We also have 
if we select a specific backlog here, so we're going to go to all epics, we can then see are there any stories that can be assigned to a group from here? And it looks like we don't have any currently available, but you can also, from this view, you can actually create a new story from within an epic and then drag it onto your board. So this board is very flexible from a planning perspective. And that's why even if uh, an organization is using Azure DevOps to do your execution of stories where your, your team members are actually in there and moving the stories, assigning them and moving them uh, forward in the process, you still may want to use ServiceNow to do these planning activities. Uh, a couple other things on this board, you can do uh, zoom in or zoom out, so we can zoom out to see a few more of the, the items. Let's go ahead and clear our backlog so we can again see all of our stories that are associated. All right, now we'll notice a couple of items in red here, and that is an indicator that we need to fix something within this board, that something is going wrong with the planning. Uh, so there's actually two things that, 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 that we're going to be able to see here. One is that underneath each sprint name, you're, you see a bar, and for most of these bars, it's green. They show it's, it's kind of a a percentage uh, a bar. What that's showing is the capacity of the team uh, compared to how many stories have been assigned, story points have been assigned in that particular sprint. So we see in most of our sprints, they're fine, but for sprint 18, we're basically, we've overcommitted this team, this HR delivery team has been overcommitted based on the number of points that is their capacity versus what's been assigned to them. So that's one issue that we need to solve. Another issue that we, that we need to solve is that we've got uh, this, this board also re will reflect dependencies uh, between stories. So we can see that this uh, survey questionnaire story is a predecessor to this new hire survey page. That one's fine. We also have that this new hire 90 day survey story is a is dependent on the new hire survey page. However, this new hire 90 day survey story was assigned to this team in a, the, the a previous sprint. So basically, these these stories are are not in alignment. They're not um, they're not in the appropriate time frame. So what we need to do, so we're going to try to fix both of these issues in this program board by moving some stories around. So this is what your scrum master working with a product owner or a program manager would be doing to, to help help make sure that you don't have uh, uh, you don't have teams that are overloaded or you don't have dependent stories that are that are not in the right time sequence. So what we can do is simply take this new hire 90 day survey story. And if you remember in Azure DevOps, it was showing in Sprint 18 over in Azure DevOps. We're going to move this over to Sprint 20. And so immediately we will see, uh, if we wait a moment, we can see this has gone back to green, showing that we are now at the appropriate level of capacity. And we fixed our dependency issue. This dependency line has now moved to green between the new hire survey and new hire 90 day survey. But unfortunately, now we've created a capacity issue in Sprint 20. So we need to basically find something from Sprint 20, and we're gonna move that over to Sprint 21. So now we've fixed all of our issues, and we can also this, you know, maybe we can remove this blocker from this particular story, hopefully. But now what we wanna do is go back over to Azure DevOps and confirm that the changes that we made in our, in, in ServiceNow were reflected over in Azure DevOps. So I'm gonna move over back over to Azure DevOps. So here was Sprint 18. I'm gonna refresh my view here and make sure our new hire 90 day survey is no longer in sprint 18. It's now, let's just check and make sure it got moved over to sprint 20 and there it is. And we also wanna make sure if we go to sprint 21, we should see our performance bonus plan story has now moved to sprint 21. All right, so any questions on that before we, we keep going? So far, none in the chat window. Okay, so yeah, so that's basically showing that as you make those changes in ServiceNow, they will reflect over in Azure DevOps. And like I said, you can use that Scrum program board really to help with your planning process to make sure you're not not over, uh, you're, you're not provider um, over allocating stories to a particular team and putting them over their capacity limit. And you're also making sure that all of your dependencies are in the right time sequence. So next, what we wanted to do is take a, take a, an item within ServiceNow and create a new story that will show up in Azure DevOps. So one big advantage of ServiceNow uh, as compared to some of the products is that if you're using IT service management in ServiceNow, you can basically combine that and have a single, single product that you're using to potentially resolve uh, incidents or problems that need to go to a second or third level that might be a development team that's using Agile. So in this case, we're gonna go into our, so we've got our HR delivery team. We're gonna go into their team view and go to their backlog for the HR delivery team. What we're gonna do is we're going to create a story 
from an incident that has just come in. So let's say an incident has been assigned to the HR delivery team. Um, we're currently logged in as our product owner, Eileen Modern. We're gonna say that this incident was assigned over to Eileen. And we can use that using the what we, what we call the triage board. So we'll go to our triage board. And basically what that allows you to do is see other records within ServiceNow that you may wanna bring in as stories. As I mentioned, you may have incidents or problems that need to get escalated to a second or third level team. And if that is a development team using Agile, they'd wanna be able to see this unplanned work, these problems and incidents alongside of their planned work. Because the challenge that a lot of teams will run into is that they've, they've done their planning, they've done their sprint planning, they've assigned out their points, they have their capacity identified. And, you know, Everything should be fine until something unexpected comes up, until some unplanned work comes in. And so when that unplanned work comes in uh, that may uh, require them to go in and fix it, that basically will potentially impact all of their planned work. And it's very difficult if you're working in two separate products, you're, you're working incidents in one product and you're working stories in, a, in another product to understand what is that impact of the unplanned work on the planned work? How do we make sure that, you know, if this is a high priority thing that we need to fix, how do we make sure that we can communicate that, okay, if we fix this now, what is that going to impact from our planned work perspective? So we're going to show how that will how that will work here. So what we're going to do is go to our all incidents view, and we've got a lot of incidents out there. You might these triage definitions can be edited so that you could potentially for a team, you may want to see records just that were assigned to that particular team or just were associated to that product that that, that team supports. But we've got a view that's going to show all incidents in our system. But we want to filter that list down because we, you know, there's going to be a lot of records that are going to show up here um, that are going to be the, the incidents that have, have come in uh, that are in this particular instance. What we want to do is we're going to filter these to just the ones that were assigned to Eileen because we know that this particular incident was assigned to her. She's the one who's triaging it and making sure that it gets assigned out to the development team and to the, to the, to the right group to actually work on it and fix this. So she can select this incident. From this, from this list view and choose add to backlog, All right? And now it disappears from this list because it will only show incidents that have not been associated with this particular story. If I go back to my backlog, I will now see this new incident or this new uh, item has come in. And if we click in on it, we'll see that there's two different uh, tabs within this particular record. We have our incident, it still exists, the incident that was out in the system, so it can still be tracked, it can still be communication can be sent back to the caller once it's resolved or if there are any follow-up questions. But in addition, we see a tab called story information. So now this incident has been linked to a new story that has been created. And now this story is associated with this HR delivery team and it can be, um, it can be now worked alongside the other planned work by this particular team. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, you know, we're gonna assign a certain number of points to this and we're gonna click on update. We could potentially assign it to an Epic or a theme or a specific product as well. So now we've created this story for this database error on lookup function in our backlog. If we go back over to our Azure DevOps in our backlog, we should be able to see this new story has now come in and the points that were associated with that story have also been transferred over to Azure DevOps. So again, if you're doing the planner planning in, in ADO, you could potentially now take this story and assign it to a, uh, a sprint and make sure that it's gonna be worked on. If you're doing your planning within ServiceNow, let's go back over to ServiceNow. We should now see this on our program board in our backlog for that HR delivery team. Uh, so we just need to find that four point story. Here it is. And now what we could do is potentially drag and drop this story into a sprint. And so we're going to put in our current sprint and, because it's a very high priority thing to fix this particular issue. But again, we've run into an issue where we've now over allocated uh, or to this particular team for this particular sprint. So now we can see that we may have to move some work out of this sprint uh, if, we, if we're going to be able to complete uh, everything that we need and also um, resolve the issue, this incident that came in, uh, then we may need to move a story out into another sprint. And so we could potentially do that. The sprint is now over allocated, so maybe we need to move it to 
a different sprint. And so this is where you might have to then work to find out, you know, if we if our teams are all are over allocated across the board, how are we going to replan our work to make sure that we can resolve this incident, but at the same time, uh, finish all of our planned work that we had uh, that, that we had planned to do. The other thing that you'll see, as I mentioned earlier, there's a slightly different icon for this particular item. It might be a little bit difficult to see on your screen, but there's a slightly different icon that shows that something, the, the origin of that particular item was like an incident versus a problem versus something that was just created as a story. And so that's where, you know, if you're someone who's trying to just get your program, a program manager or scrum master that wants to get uh, a, a big picture view of all the work that's going on, you can kind of see what is our planned work versus what is our unplanned work. And so you're seeing a lot of unplanned work come in. You may have to, to um, make some adjustments and you know, either add to your team or you know, do something so that you can try to cut down on the unplanned work and make sure that uh, you have more time to develop new functionality and new features. All right, so now that we've moved this story into Sprint 18 on our ServiceNow side, we can look over on our Azure DevOps side and go to our Sprint view and take a look at sprint 18 and now we can see here's that story that was associated with the incident that's now in our um, in our sprint 18. all right so the next thing i wanted to show well, actually let's uh let's maybe take a pause to see if anybody has any questions so far no questions in the chat window okay all right so the next thing we want to do is as i mentioned before you may have your team members you know they're you're doing your planning work, let's say in ServiceNow, but your team members all, they're very comfortable working in Azure DevOps. Maybe they're doing, you know, a lot of a lot of their other development work, they're, they're leveraging Azure DevOps for some of those different functions. And so from an execution perspective, they want to just stay in Azure DevOps and not move over to ServiceNow to update the stories and identify when things are complete. So they might be looking at this board view uh, to say, okay, here's our different stories. They've got their swim lanes. How can I move something over? So let's say someone has taken on this particular story. You know, they may be able to assign it to a particular user who's taken on. So let's say Tom has taken on this particular story, and he's going to be he's going to be working on it. Um, and now he's ready to move it over. So let's say it's it's active. So he just brings the card over and moves it over to active. So then, if we go back over to ServiceNow for this particular story so we want to know you know if i'm a scrum master and i'm working in service now what's going on with that story that uh that tom is working on i would be able to see you know, what is it from a state perspective that state will get updated in service now to say it is now work in progress it's no longer in draft and if in azure devops i say okay now this story is complete i can move it to resolved or closed and go back to service now. I'll be able to see. Take it a second. It now shows this is complete. And if I look back on the board, and let's just refresh this view. Back on the board, I should see a check mark next to that particular story to show that it was complete. And again, all of this is happening in real time. So there it is showing that it's complete. Now, we get a lot of questions around exactly what fields will integrate out of the box. And so the fields that you get that will integrate are things within the story, uh, as I mentioned before, the epic, the state, and there is a mapping that you have to do between, the, because the, the values of, of the state are slightly different between Azure DevOps and ServiceNow, you, there is a, a, a mapping uh, and if you add additional states on one side, you will have to update that mapping. Uh, the points will be transferred over, the sprints, uh, the assignment group, and the assigned to, if you have, make sure that you have the same assigned to on both sides, that would that would also integrate. And then the short description would integrate uh, between, that, that information will go between one side and the other. Now, if this is something that is configurable, uh, if you have additional fields that you've been added or additional fields that you want to make sure are brought over to ServiceNow or vice versa, where, the, where is that, that, there's that bi-directional communication, you can make those updates. Uh, you could have basically any field. You just make sure have to make sure the, the field exists on both sides. It has to exist both in ServiceNow and in Azure DevOps uh, to be able to integrate that field. If it's something that's like a dropdown, that's a, um, a selectable value, 
Uh, for those cases, you may have to do a mapping. You either have to have the exact same values on one side or the other, or you have to map between, like in this case, our complete map to their resolved or uh, completed on, on the Azure DevOps side. Um, the setup is fairly straightforward. Like I said, you do have to have the, the integration hub spoke has to be active. Um, if you do have ITBM Pro licenses, you don't need to, to pay anything additionally for integration hub. Um, so it just is, is standard as part of that particular license. Um, the setup, like I said, you do have to do some configuration. So your, your admins would have to configure to make sure that the connection exists between your ADO side and your ServiceNow side. There's some things that like a token that has to be created to make sure that uh, then the information can be transferred back and forth. Um, if you have a huge uh, implementation of ADO where you've got, you know, hundreds of stories and you don't want it to be a live update you want the the integration to be to run on a timed interval you can set that up where it would not be a live integration where it would just be something where it might true up every night um, and you might you would only do that like i said if it's a huge amount of data that would be going back and forth and you are mostly interested in things like analytics where you'd be able to tell you know, maybe you're collecting data via our, the agile dashboards in service now and you want to use that data, but you don't necessarily want to have a live integration. You could pull that data over from ADO to ServiceNow on a nightly, daily or nightly basis to then just populate those particular dashboards. But again, that's a fairly rare use case. Most of our customers that, that want to use this are doing it in, as, with that, um, that real-time update uh, but between the products. Um, so I think that goes through most of what uh, I wanted to cover. I think I'm a, I've got... Uh, a little bit, about five minutes early. Anything, any other questions that anyone has about this integration, how it works? Um, I didn't go into too much into like the setup and the the real, you know, the the technical part of the integration, but we could go a little bit deeper there if, if someone wanted to. Okay. Uh, definitely, since it's such a, uh, a, a lighter crowd, if you guys all want to take yourself off of mute, you can go ahead and ask questions directly. I would say if there's possibility of going through some of the configuration elements in a little sure. bit more, you know, I think that would be greatly served unless someone else disagrees. And I will definitely take silence as uh, acceptance. Okay, let me bring up. So the best place that I've found to, you know, that, that goes through is actually in our, in our online documentation. So I'm gonna bring that up. Okay, so here's our documentation site that kind of goes through the different setup tasks uh, that you need to do. So first off, it is a store app that has to be downloaded to, uh, to leverage this particular integration. And that store app also includes, as I mentioned, the integration hub spoke, um, but there are some, we typically use flow designer flows that have been built uh, to, to maintain this. Right, so once you've installed that, the big thing then is um, kind of setting up the, the connection. And so it, this does go into a step-by-step -step of what you need to do. So here's all the items that are, that are installed. Uh, and then when you set it up, it's actually, you know, you have to create your different connections. And so that's the area that uh, is a little bit more detailed. Um, so the first element is going in and creating an alias. So I'm gonna go back over into our ServiceNow instance and show you a couple of those things. So if we go into our connections and credentials, and actually you have to be an admin to be able to do this. So I'm gonna end my impersonation with Eileen and go back in as our system admin. So in our connections and credentials, we've created uh, credentials for our ADO connection. And within that, there's then gonna be some other connections. Again, this is a fairly uh, involved process to be able to set these up. But if we drill into our actual connection, it's an HTTP connection that we're creating between our instances. So this is showing basically, this is the uh, URL of our Azure instance. And so within your environment, your URL for Azure might be a little bit different. And then you have to, you actually have a credential that you create. And this is where I think most of the, the information uh, that you have to have on the other instances is, is, uh, is stored is in that, uh, that 
auth credentials. So I need to go into credentials here and we have our credentials for our ADO demo. Actually, let's see, where is that? It's actually under your, Connection alias. So, so there is uh, a spot here as well where you have to basically put in, I think it's the OAuth credentials, where you can then identify your Azure DevOps connections. And you'd put in things like, you know, what is your, um, actually, so what is like your, URLs and uh, items that need to be set up on the, the ADO side. Then once you've got that set up, your connections, again, that's something that typically an admin would need to do. Then we have this separate section that's called your DevOps uh, or your Azure integration. And so this is where the, the biggest thing that you have to have on both sides is a team. So if we were in our um, ADO instance, um, you basically have your project that's in ADO. And then within that project, you have multiple teams that have been identified. So we, if we go into our sprints, we've got these different teams that we have. And so in the ServiceNow side, you need to have a one-to-one -one correlation between those teams that you have in ADO and the teams that you wanna integrate in with ServiceNow. So we had this HR delivery team on ADO we have the same HR delivery team over on ServiceNow. So it is, if you're using multiple teams in ADO, you will have to use multiple teams within ServiceNow. You can't then like take multiple teams in ADO and then integrate with one team in ServiceNow. It does have to be a one-to-one -one relationship. Um, there is also some other instance settings that, uh, that you set up. Um, so there's what, what I mentioned, the mappings. So that we're using a, an out-of-the-box mapping, this, this uh, uh, scrum mapping to make sure that we're, Take, bring over the right fields from one side to the other. So it'll automatically bring those over. And so we have things like items in your backlog and your epics are the two tables that are, that are being integrated. And once you set up that, that mapping, uh, then you have to make sure that you have the right projects registered. And then, like I mentioned, then you go into each team and you identify what is your team in, in uh, ServiceNow versus what is your team over on the Azure DevOps side. And within this, it does have the ability, you know, you have a create agile group um, item over on your uh, ServiceNow side. So if you have a team in, in Azure DevOps, uh, you can then just create a, a team on the ServiceNow side if you wish to make put those in alignment. Now, there is also the ability if you already have the data in Azure DevOps and you want to just import existing data for teams, sprints, epics, you can do that. Um, that is something that was... Uh, in those Azure DevOps instances, you can actually do a uh, discover projects. And then it will, allow, once you're in the project record, uh, that's like that ADO integration, you can import work items. So this is where you could take uh, data that's already in Azure DevOps and bring it into ServiceNow. Uh, on the other side, it's a little bit trickier. Um, we currently haven't yet built the ability to take existing ServiceNow items and bring them over to Azure DevOps. Uh, it's something that you actually, there is a workaround where you can make a small change to the item and then um, it will see that it exists and we'll put it over in Azure DevOps. But anything you build, once the integration is in place, anything you create or change on one sort of the side or the other will automatically then um, get created on the other side. So just, uh, I guess, you know, you might want to, to work with, uh, you know, our implementation uh, specialist or a partner if you are trying to bring over existing items from ServiceNow into Azure DevOps, but uh, any of the other uh, directions to Azure DevOps into ServiceNow for existing items or any new items should be fairly easy to, um, to have that integration work um, uh, out of the box uh, once, you've, once you've set everything up, set up all those uh, the connection items. So I think that's was primarily it from a from a connections perspective. If you do want to just make sure if you're running into issues, there are error logs that can be uh, referenced from within the Azure DevOps integration. The other piece that you'd want to look at if something is not working is to go into Flow Designer. So Flow Designer basically is where we're building all the automation to say, oh, if I've 
updated this record or created this record, have it then uh, send the information over to, to Azure DevOps. So if you go into executions, we'll be able to see here um, things like process the Azure DevOps work item flow. So that's basically taking you know, when I've updated something uh, in Azure DevOps and it's going to come back to ServiceNow and update something. Or if I'm changing something in ServiceNow, it will then uh, trigger something to then update Azure DevOps. So what you'll want to do here is if, if something's not working, you'd look for errors within this. Uh, so these are all complete. They all ran, looks like they worked. But if there was an error, you'd be able to drill into one of these items. Uh, looks like I need to open the context record. You can then go in and see like exactly what was it that failed. Um, if, if one of these particular items, if there would, had been an error, it would be able to show me what was it that actually caused the error within that, uh, that particular item. All right, and then under connections, this is where, like I mentioned before, it's using the, um, uh, the integration hub spoke with, uh, with ADO. And so we can see we've got some of those have been configured. Our Azure DevOps uh, integration hub spoke has been configured. That's what we actually configured to create that integration between the two items. And so if you did want to uh, potentially build an integration out with Azure DevOps that wasn't necessarily with our out of the box, that integration hub spoke would be what you might be able to, to use to do that. But that would be a lot more involved because what we've built out of the box is basically ready. We've already used the spoke and built the, built all the flows and the, the uh, necessary uh, automations to make that, that integration work. All right. Any questions on this? So far, not seeing any uh, questions. So um, definitely, uh, this has been good so far. Um, any questions yeah. from the teams that are out there? All right, I'm assuming this was all crystal clear. I, uh, definitely, it's been a great pleasure walking through this. Namita, is there anything that you think that we need to add to this conversation at all or? No, I think this is wonderful, Rob. Thanks for covering um, also the configuration part, which which was not part of the demo. So thanks for adding it and, uh, on the request. Yeah. Okay. All right. So did you want to open things up then for other general questions? Yeah, we could do that. So um, let's open up for questions. I'm also too going to launch the poll just to be safe. Um, are there any questions, Alicia or Mandy? I don't think I have any questions at this time regarding um, the Azure DevOps component of the alignment planner and how all of that integrates. Yeah, we didn't really actually go over alignment planner workspace. There is going to be, uh, so if I don't, if you're somewhat familiar with alignment planner workspace, that's well, the, the part of our product that allows us to do things like road mapping. Um, so there is a future integration plan that's actually in development with Azure DevOps that would allow you to take work items from Azure DevOps, such as epics, and have them come into the alignment planner workspace as planning items. So that if you've got, let's say, you know, you're doing um, maybe hybrid work where you've got some projects and demands that are out in your system, but you're also doing epic work in Azure DevOps and they have start and end dates associated that, with that, you'd be able to see that all on a same timeline view, a same roadmap view um, uh, with, with those items. Currently, we basically allow you to do that. Let me, I'm gonna just uh, share quickly about Alignment Planner Workspace. I had that in one of my instances here that I was showing. Um, so our alignment planner workspace, uh, make sure I have the right instance. Here it is. So alignment planner workspace allows you to see things on a roadmap. And uh, if we show the portfolio view, you'd be able to see things like, and I'm gonna color code these by The different planning item types. So you've got things like demands, projects, and Scrum epics all showing up on the same roadmap uh, based on their start and end date. What our Azure DevOps integration with, with APW will allow you to do is 
you wouldn't have to have a record within ServiceNow for like the the the, the uh, Azure DevOps work. It would show up as roadmap items, and it would be kind of an like Azure DevOps epic would show up as a separate item. You'd be able to visualize on your roadmap alongside your your any other planning work that you had, uh, plan like any other demands projects, Scrum epics within ServiceNow. So that's really what that integration will ultimately do. Great, good question. Any other questions that are out there? All right, well, I, I, again, thank you so much, Rob, uh, for your overview and especially going through the configuration as well. Um, for those watching the video, if there's any other questions you guys have, please post that into the community. We will end a little bit early here, um, given that there's no more questions, but definitely, as always, thank you guys so much for attending or watching this office hour. We hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And for those that weren't on the call, uh, enjoy your Thanksgiving week. Take care, everyone. Thank Thanks. you so much. Right, Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Rob. All right. Bye.